Hello boys and girls. Uh, this is, uh, welcome back to Visual Arts. Uh, this is actually our, our uh, project number five and today we're going to be talking about the uh, element of art of textures. So just as a review, the, the projects we've done so far, we have designed superhero logos. We have drawn uh, self-portraits of super kids behind their masks. We have uh, discarded, uh, discussed our unit of, of the elements of art. Um, for example, we have done uh, the uh, first element of art is lines. So just as a review, can you name all of the lines? Ready? Now, if you would like to pause the video, you can always uh, pause the video. Uh, but I'm going to give you a little pause, and then I'm going to give you the answer. But I'd like for you to say the answer before I do. And if you don't, then this will be a good way to review, and it's a, a good way to learn the names of the lines. So are you guys ready? Get set. Name these lines. What line's this? Horizontal, vertical, diagonal, curved, zigzag, jagged, broken, and thick and thin. So hopefully, uh, you know, the more we practice, uh, you can actually name all of these lines without having um, help from me. And uh, once you know the names of all the lines, it will help you to uh, uh, draw, it help you to uh, uh, write about art and discuss art. So, what element of art is this? That's right, it's lines. Good job, everyone. Now, uh, we did line projects um, and uh, uh, we practiced with lines, we drew some pictures of lines, you know, depending on what grade level uh, you're, you're in. Uh, we did different kinds uh, of uh, line charts and, uh, and art projects dealing with line. The project after lines, we were working with the, um, we can check that off our list, uh, we were talking about shapes. Shapes is a two-dimensional unit in a work of art, and we can only measure them by their height and width. And uh, the main thing about shapes is there's three different kinds of shapes. And I think last week's lesson, we only focused on shapes that are based on math rules. Those are called geometric shapes. So uh, for my younger students, I, I, I really would like for you to be able to name all of these shapes. And for my older students, uh, I know you know the simple shapes, but I, I really would like for you to know all of these complex shapes as well. So if you can, see if you can name these uh, really quickly before I name them. Circle. Square. Triangle, rectangle, oval, heart. Those are the simple geometric shapes, meaning that they have really simple rules that will help you to make these shapes. And there's usually only one right, uh, uh, you know, there's only one way to make a square. A square has four sides, but all four sides must be the same. Triangle has three sides because uh, it's a three-sided shape. That's the rule of a triangle. So those rules are fairly simple, but when we move over to the complex uh, geometric shapes, usually those are made up of some of the simples. For example, a diamond is made up of two, you're right, two triangles. What's this complex geometric shape? Trapezoid. A trapezoid has three triangles hiding inside. Six-sided shape is called a hexagon. A hexagon has two trapezoids hiding inside or six triangles. Eight-sided shape is an octagon. An octagon has eight triangles. A five-sided shape is a pentagon, and it's going to have how many triangles? That's right, five. Uh, the last two are the really tricky ones, but what do you call a rectangle that looks like it's leaning? Parallelogram. Parallelogram is a tricky word to say. Parallelogram. And then a square that looks like it's leaning is called a rhombus. Those are uh, geometric shapes that we use um, uh, most often. There's more than what you see on the screen, but the, if you can uh, get these, then these are the ones we discuss the most. What shape would you consider this seashell? So what shape did George O'Keefe use in her painting? Is it a perfect circle? No, it's not a perfect circle because the bottom of the seashell has this uh, curvy line that makes it the circle a little bit more oblong. 
So what do you call shapes that resemble things from nature? Now let's talk about the second group of shapes. Organic shapes are shapes that resemble things from nature, such as animals, flowers, trees, leaves, and so forth. So uh, if I was drawing a circle, there's only one right rule. It has to have 360 degrees, no straight lines. If you draw a shape of a cloud and it looks like a cloud, then you got it right. It's a cloud. If you draw a shape of an animal and it looks like an animal, then it's an animal. So there's no one right way to make uh, a drawing of a frog or any animal. Um, same with plants, people, and leaves. Uh, if, it, if you draw a shape that looks like a leaf, then it's a leaf. But we can't call these geometric shapes because they're all rounded, they're uneven, and they are things that live in nature. And so uh, we call them organic shapes. Organic means natural or from nature. So organic shapes. The uh, third group of shapes is uh, sort of like, you know, what if you find a shape that you don't know what to do with? It does not look, uh, it does not follow a math rule, so we can't call it geometric, and it does not look like anything from nature, so we can't call it organic. We call these freeform shapes. Freeform shapes are these weird, whacked out shapes that, you know, they don't follow math rules, and they don't look like anything from nature. So we, we've made a group of their own free-form shapes. Now, I'd love for us to apply uh, the things we just learned. We've reviewed lines, and we've also reviewed uh, shapes. So let's look at a, a famous painting, and would you be able to look at this famous painting and name me the lines the artist used in the painting? Can you name at least two lines the artist used in the painting? If you said horizontal, you said vertical those are the two straight lines that are in this painting now if you did uh, 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 when Modrian the artist who painted this painting when he drew the horizontal lines and the vertical lines he actually made uh, some shapes can you name at least two shapes the artist used in the painting rectangles and squares now squares and rectangles are they geometric shapes organic shapes or are they freeform shapes? You're right. They are geometric shapes. So Modrian would be an artist who uses geometric shapes. Kandinsky is a Russian abstract expressionist artist who loves to listen to music and then uh, paint what he hears. And so on this we see lines and shapes. Can you identify at, at least two or three different kinds of lines that Kandinsky used in this painting. Now, if you look hard enough, you might find all of them. I see, uh, we'll start with uh, horizontals. There's a really thin horizontal. We see two verticals, a really big diagonal. That's probably the main line in the whole painting. We see curves. There's a good curve. We see uh, zigzag, this is the beginning of a zigzag, so I'm going to count that. Uh, we see jagged, this is a great example of a jagged line. Um, we see uh, broken, uh, and we also see thick and thin. So these are some really thin lines, and this one actually starts off thin, and it gets sort of thick. So I, uh, this painting actually has all of the lines. And what about shapes? How many shapes can you find in this, in this painting? Circles are some of the main shapes. Triangles, there's one really large yellow triangle here. We have ovals, diamonds, squares, rectangles. Anybody know the name of this brown one? It's a trapezoid. So uh, this painting, would you say the artist used geometric shapes, organic shapes, or freeform shapes? Yeah. This is actually a painting that uses uh, a wide variety of lines and geometric shapes. We'll go back to George O'Keefe's painting. Uh, and so can you name me uh, the most important line in this painting? So if you look, it's this one that spins and it gets smaller and smaller, 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 smaller. So what do you call a line like that? Yes, I would call it curve, but do you know the name of this curve that spins, spins, spins until it gets smaller? Or 
you can actually start in the middle and, and get larger. That is called a spiral. Okay, so we got lines covered, but what kind of shape did George O'Keefe use again? It's a seashell. It's from nature. So we would say this would be a good example of an organic shape because it's not perfectly geometric. Henry Matisse is an artist who loves to cut out um, uh, these weird whacked out shapes out of paper. And if I outline one of these shapes, uh, what kind of line did he use on the outside of this shape? Yes, that's very, very curvy. If you think this looks like plants um, or um, something you, or coral that you might see underwater, then you, yes, you could call this an organic uh, shape drawing. Or if you look at it like I look at it, it's just these, um, it's just weird, whacked out shapes. Uh, and and I would consider this to be freeform shapes. So I'm trying to find an example so that we uh, can identify freeform shapes, um, organic shapes, and geometric shapes. So this completes our review of shapes. So now we've completed two um, elements of design, lines and shapes. So now let's go and check them off our list. Now let's talk about uh, element number three. And uh, this year I'm, I'm doing them a little out of order, uh, but it's quite all right. Let's talk about how uh, a surface looks and feels. Um, if if I play pretend for a minute, and we find I find out that a, a kid uh, gets hurt uh, somewhere at her school and is sent up to the nurse, the nurse checks the kid over and he's got scratches on his forehead, on his arms, his hands, and he's wearing shorts and he's got scratches on his knee. What if Miss, uh, uh, the nurse comes to us and says, we need to figure out what this kid got hurt on so that we can help treat, the, treat his injuries. And so if I give all of you a camera and you go all over our school uh, and let's see if we can photograph different surfaces so we can see what the kid might have gotten hurt on. So these are the photographs that, we've, uh, that, that we pretend to take. The first photograph is of a carpet. Uh, Miss Joyce and some uh, in kindergarten, uh, her whole room is carpeted. The library has uh, a, it's a full room of carpet. What if the kid came and slid across the carpet? Hmm, that may cause a carpet burn, but I don't think it would call all the scrapes and scratches the kid had. But that was a good photo. What about uh, itchy burlap? Um, Mr. Mead, our PE teacher, has these burlap sacks. And uh, during field day and special events, we may have sack races where students will try to get to the finish line, but you have to, you're sort of hopping in the sack. But what if uh, a, a kid trips? Some, hmm, the itchy material. It may make some scratches on the, on the legs, uh, on the knees, and maybe on the hands, but I don't know how the kid got scratches on his head. What about shingles on the roof? Nah. Those are really, really rough and scratchy, but uh, nobody's allowed up there on the roof. So we'll, we'll skip that one. What if they slip and fall in the bathroom? Because maybe uh, somebody's playing in the bathroom, got water on the floor. Uh, it's a slippery surface and the kid falls. Yeah, you're right. That, you're, you're right. That, that wouldn't cause scratches. That may be a bump or a bruise. What about, oh, this is a picture of my bulletin board. If I run my fingers across it, you can tell it's a very bumpy surface. That helps when I stick pictures up on the on the board, but yeah, I agree with you. I don't know how somebody would have fall up against the bulletin board to get scratches on their knee. So that you, you got a point there. What about a uh, paper? Uh, maybe uh, uh, we have, there's a, a large uh, roll of paper, um, and the kid came around the corner, got tripped, and wrapped up in the paper. No, I don't think I call scratches either. Maybe a paper cut, but not, no no scratches. <gasps> oh, what about the bricks? The library, uh, our whole building is bricked on the outside, and what if the kid was running uh, around the, the library, maybe trip up against the wall? That could explain the scratches on the knees, the shoulder, maybe the elbow, but the hand, the kid, had, the inside of his hand was scratched, not on the outside. So, hmm, Let, let's, let's hold that thought on the bricks. This is actually what we call pavement. Uh, we have a paved trail uh, that's made out of um, a sort of asphalt material that goes from uh, the library out to the outside classroom. Maybe the kid fell on that. 
That is a very highly possibility. What about my tables? Now, my tables has this really nice smooth so that we can actually draw and, and uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to, to make straight lines if we had a bumpy surface on a table. So I don't think the kid got hurt on my table. What about the sidewalk or maybe a flannel shirt? Now, I agree with you. A flannel shirt, nobody's going to get hurt in a flannel shirt. It's soft and comfortable. But let's go back to the sidewalk. Now, if you're an older student, um, you might remember this story of um, the, the kid that was playing tag out on recess, but it was happened at a different school, not our school. And um, he ran through uh, on the basketball court, tried to run through some older kids playing basketball uh, so he wouldn't get tagged. And he tripped and he slid on the, uh, 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 the basketball court, which is actually made of concrete, uh, the same material as the sidewalk. The kid uh, uh, got scrapes and scratches on his hand, his elbow, his uh, shoulder, his uh, forehead, his nose, his upper lip, his chin, and his cheek. It really scratched him all up. And if you remember, I said that was sort of a true story, and and the kid was was me. That happened to me uh, when I was uh, it's either around first grade or second grade, and I was playing tag, and I tripped over a tree root that grew uh, up underneath their basketball court, which made a buckle, and I tripped and fell and, and got all scratched up. So that was a, a sort of a long story, but what I'm trying to get is on that day, I learned about the element of textures. Textures is how a surface looks and feels. Now, if you look at the pictures you see on your screen, we've got uh, textures uh, from carpet to wet floor to shingles to sidewalks, uh, even a shirt. Textures are everywhere. And so what I'd like to do is uh, take you on a texture hunt um, and see how many textures you can find either inside your home or outside your home. I'm sending home uh, a texture chart. Uh, I'm also going to attach a document that if you want to print it out, uh, if, if for some reason the texture chart didn't make it to your home uh, or to, the, to your folders, you can print it out, get you a couple of crayons, and go outside and do some texture rubbings. Now, I have a guest art teacher uh, working with me for a couple of weeks uh, up until about um, uh, Thanksgiving, and her name is Miss Cahoon. Ms. Cahoon and I are, are going to uh, go out and see if we can find some really cool textures out on the playground. And so if you want to watch the second part of the video, you'll see us going out and I will demonstrate how you can find and record different textures by creating texture rubbings. So hope you enjoy uh, seeing how many textures you can find. Uh, you don't have to turn these in. I just want you to have fun with it um, uh, and see what kind of cool textures you can, you can find around your home, outside, or inside. Have fun, everyone.